Welcome back. This is AP Environmental Science Chapter 4. We're going to continue our discussion on global climates and biomes. And uh, we've already talked about a lot of this stuff, but I wanted to post a video just to, so you can go back and review and, and such before any test. And so climate is very important for us to discuss because in order to understand biomes and the pla their placement on Earth, we have to understand climate. And so uh, it's the geographic variations in temperature and precipitation that have developed distinct biomes, uh, terrestrial biomes uh, on Earth. And so it's important for us to understand climate. The first thing we talked about in class was unequal heating of the Earth. And so the sun's energy passes through the atmosphere and strikes different surfaces and warms the surface of the Earth. However, this does not occur evenly uh, across the planet. So there's an unequal heating of the earth and this is what's going to drive different weather patterns and uh, air and ocean currents and such. And so these unequal uh, heating is because the angle at which the sun's rays strike the earth and the amount of surface area of which these sun's rays are distributed. So if you remember we had the earth and we had the atmosphere this is not going to be as good as the diagram. We had the sun's rays coming in uh, directly at the crea uh, equator, and it had very little atmosphere to go through. But up in a higher latitude, it had a much greater uh, distance to uh, get through in terms of the atmosphere, and so it lost more heat. And so the angle at which the uh, so you have this lower angle, and then you have a perpendicular angle. And this angle at which the sun's rays strike is going to change, you know, have an unequal heating. More heat at the equator than higher latitudes. The heat energy is going to be very focused at the equator, much like a magnifying glass. When you get that angle right and you have a very focused um, beam of light on a leaf, it's going to burn the leaf. Whereas higher latitudes, it's going to be very, the solar energy is going to be distributed over a, uh, a larger surface area. Just like a magnifying glass, you change the angle, you spread it over the leaf, and it's not going to burn that leaf. And so this angle and the amount of photons hitting per square meter uh, is different at the equator than it is at a higher latitude. And then we also talked about albedo. Just a real quick refresher, high albedo uh, is like fresh snow where you have 80 to 95 percent of the solar uh, energy being reflected, right? Quite a bit being reflected. And then you have a low albedo like asphalt where you only have 5 to 10 percent being reflected. This is why, you know, uh, the, if you were to touch the asphalt in the parking lot, it's going to be very, very hot. So there's different albedos or percent of reflection of solar energy. Remember that sea ice is a very important topic because sea ice reflects a lot of the solar energy on Earth, 50 to 90 percent. But because we're losing more sea ice uh, year to year in the Arctic, uh, that means that instead of being reflected, it's being absorbed by water because water has a very uh, a much lower, depending on where you are, much lower. Uh, albedo. A few different uh, key things in terms of properties, so convection currents, remember convection is movement of uh, molecules, so whether that's liquid or gas, and we're talking about atmosphere, so it's a gas in this case. So these uh, convection currents have four important properties for uh, the movement of air, and so density is the first property, less dense air rises, denser air sinks. This is the same for a fluid. Less uh, dense liquid rises, a much more dense liquid sinks. And so density is very important in terms of convection currents. Water vapor capacity. So when we talk about water vapor capacity, warm air has a high capacity for water vapor than uh, cold air. And so if you go to Hawaii, step outside, very humid out, very warm out. There's a lot of water vapor in the air. 
Uh, whereas if you go up to the mountains to go skiing, it's very dry. It's, you know, the, it's a colder air, very dry. It can't hold as much water vapor in that air. We also have, uh, I'll ask you to take a look. For some reason, it didn't show up on this slide. But uh, figure uh, 4.5 in your book, which is uh, page 91, this talks about saturation point. Saturation point is just simply uh, the temperature, the maximum amount of water vapor that can be held in the air at a given temperature. So the maximum amount of uh, water vapor uh, that can be held in the air at a given temperature. And so uh, take a look at that figure. Adiabatic cooling and heating. Oops. Adiabatic cooling and heating. When air rises into the atmosphere, the pressure decreases and the air expands. This causes cooling. When the air sinks, the pressure increases, the volume of the air decreases, and this causes heating. And also latent heat release. So when water vapor, so when uh, water vapor changes or condenses into a liquid, energy is released. Uh, so heat energy is released. Remember that energy is not destroyed, and so therefore when the water condenses, those molecules have to transfer that energy somewhere, and it's going to be in the surrounding atmosphere. Coriolis effect is a very important effect, and so. Uh, remember in class we talked about, well, if you're standing at the pole or if you're standing at the equator, the speed that you're going in terms of the rotation of the earth is faster at the equator than at a higher latitude like the poles. And so at the equator, you're moving at like 1600 kilometers per hour, whereas at, uh, you know, near the pole, you're moving at like 200 kilometers per hour. So imagine yourself hovering above the Earth. The Earth is spinning below you. One rotation at the equator, you have a whole lot of land and water surface area to pass under you. If you're at the pole, you don't have that much uh, area to pass under you in one rotation. This is called the Coriol Coriolis effect. So this causes a deflection. So if you were at the pole and the earth was not rotating and you threw a baseball, it would, uh, directly south, it would land right where you threw it in a straight line. But because of the rotation of the earth and this effect called the Coriolis effect, there's a deflection. And so you throw the baseball in this direction, but it lands over here due to the rotation of the earth. This acts not only on, let me go back, this acts not only on baseballs, if you could throw it that far, but uh, air molecules. So as the earth is rotating, uh, the Coriolis effect is taking place on air molecules. This is going to change their direction. It's going to deflect their direction. This causes air currents, prevailing winds. And so as you see here, you have prevailing winds due to this Coriolis effect. They're going in a very particular direction due to that deflection. Also take note of the Hadley cell. We had a, um, a well, presentation on that or video on that, and that causes air currents in all sorts of directions. We also have a polar cell, and that's where you have uh, air rising at about 60 degrees north or 60 degrees south, and it's going to rise and then fall uh, at the poles, and so it rises and falls as it gets cold at the poles. So it's just the opposite of a Hadley cell, and it's in a different location. Earth's tilt and seasons this is the last thing we'll talk about. So the Earth is tilted at a 23.5 degree angle, and so if we look at it, the Earth is always tilted at this 23.5 degree angle no matter where it is in terms of its position around the sun. Remember that the, the Earth takes 365 days uh, to get around the sun. And so, uh, so the Earth is spinning on this axis that you see here constantly, you know, spinning, 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 spinning for 365 days, changing positions around the sun. This causes differences in seasons. And so when it's located over here, you're going to see that the northern hemisphere has about 24 hours of sunlight, whereas the southern hemisphere down at the pole has 
literally 24 hours of darkness. So it's summer up here, winter down here. When we get over here, the opposite. Uh, the northern uh, hemisphere and higher latitudes have pretty much 24 hours of darkness, and the southern pole has uh, literally about 24 hours of sunlight. So it's winter here, it's summer here. So uh, this is all due to the 23.5 uh, degree angle that it sits. So that is uh, just a quick video on unequal heating of the earth and also seasons due to the tilted axis of the earth.